Hey everyone, this is Day Trader Rockstar, and today I am bringing you a very, very special educational video on scalping. Um, I got a question from a member um, over the weekend on how to follow the, my t technique that I teach on Day Trading Radio, um, but use it more for uh, scalping. And um, because I use a, a set of indicators, one of the main indicators is the stochastic indicator. It kind of represents a lot to do with my my entries and stuff. And that and each each week I also put out a um, a watch list that represents all these indicators lining up, and we call those high probability setups. <coughs> when you have the most of your indicators lining up, you get a high probability of a bounce or a move in the direction that uh, the indicators are showing. Um, and you know. The positions are always, you know, right on. It always gives you the best opportunity in this market. And I, I try to figure out a way of stressing this um, to new traders out there. You know, trading is not the easiest thing in the world. It, but I believe that's because a lot of us have, we're very emotional in trades. We don't know how to handle our emotions. We don't have the patience. We don't know discipline. We, you know, we're just let down to the markets to try to, uh, you know, make a buck. And a lot of people don't know how to do that. And what the indicators do is kind of tie you into a, uh, it kind of pulls it back and lets you, you know, let's make sure you doesn't, make sure you don't overtrade the markets. Uh, and what I really wanted to do is let the market come down to you, where it gives you the best opportunity. Then you can take a, your opportunity at that point because that's what really trading is about: is taking the opportunity. It's not that we really know that or can predict, um, you know, outstanding news in the world, you know, uh, company new related news. All we could go with is indicators, momentum, and, and patterns. And this is all based on that. So, yes, you know, the, the, uh, the scalping part of the, uh, you know, the, the, the trade is, is so important because, you know, the techniques just carry through from, you know, the longer range uh, swing trades from the daily all the way down to the 60, to the 15-minute uh, chart if you use it, to the 5-minute chart, to the 1-minute chart. So I'm going to actually go over today how I use the uh, uh, the method to scalp stocks, and this is probably the best best technique I could I could uh, give to a newer trader out there to kind of guide them and get them started in the market because it has a um, a higher degree of success and it kind of it trains you not to overtrade. So um, now there's a lot to go into this, and I'm not going to, you know, do a whole detailed um, video on my indicators because there's so many of out, so many out there. You can just go on YouTube and do uh, a search for Day Trader Rockstar, and you'll see the whole system and the whole methodology and everything broken down into different videos. But right now we're just going to talk about individual scalping. And what I like to do is, you know, I'm always comparing the overall markets, the S&P 500. I always want to be on the right side of the market when I'm when I'm scalping. That's more important. Even though the market might be coming down and we get bounces, I like to do that also. I mean, that's 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 probably falls into a, a you know a technique that we use a lot. But we also have to kind of always maintain a a good a view of what the markets are doing, because um, you want to you want to be in the right position at the right time. All right. So what I do is, you know, and kind of break this down. Um, when I do some scalps, I kind of tend to use the five-minute chart. And what I did here is I take, we're going to take um, three, three stocks that we could be scalping. Well, um, just for, for an example, Netflix, Amazon, and Tractor Supply Company, TSCO. These are stocks that we follow each day. And I think that's, you know, start off by saying that you should get yourself familiar with a group of stocks that you could trade. You know, that's one of the mo more important things is to know your stock. That If you're going to scalp it, you should know it. You should come back to it all the time. You should learn about it. You know, have a group of stocks that you could do. And then what you do is you put them up on the board next to each other. This is what I do. I put them up on the board next to each other. I have um, seven screens in front of me. You don't need seven screens. I have seven screens for the show. Make sure I get all the information out. But you can have a couple screens. And you, you throw these um, chart patterns up on there. And you also keep the five the S&P 500 nearby. And I also keep the, um, the futures nearby, which is... The S&P uh, futures, E-mini futures, and this is an example of Friday's market. And what we're doing is we're looking for the combination of the indicator setting up that we usually do when we scalp, you know, E-minis. You know, we look for a recognizable trend starting to form. And once we have that, we know that two points make a straight line. So that third test is a potential test. And if we have the stochastics, and this is the full stochastics 1433 set up in an oversold level, 
that pretty much tells me, you know, that's one of the better indicators you want to get. And you can see, you can even go back here in hindsight and look at the indicator and how it's set up and how the trend line set up. Now, a lot of people, you know, I, I find it sometimes um, silly, silly to ignore this. Like if I were you, I, you know, I'd pay attention to this, this, this level here. You know, each time it came back to that trend line and we had an oversold stochastic indicator setting up, it bounced, all right? And there's reasons behind this, and most of it has to do with machine, you know, the algorithms, the black boxes out there that are recognizing these lines, recognizing the, the pullbacks. And what you're doing is you're, you have an uptrending market, but you're buying on a slight pullback, so you're getting the best risk reward. So as the market pulls back, you have this bigger move here. You know that the trend is up because the trend line is showing that. So you get that pullback, you get the oversold level, the probability of, th of that momentum switching, you're going to move up until you, the next time you get that, you shouldn't take that trade. So that's one of the things I kind of force is let the trade come to you. There's no reason to guess where the trade is going, but the indicators are telling you, hey, this is a good level. You have a support, you have a change of momentum. There might be some other things that are happening, recognizable pattern. And the combination of all those are going to give you a better, a better chance and a better read on the market. So we always pay attention to that and we kind of break that down into the five minute chart. So what I want to do is also is look at the five minute chart. As the, as the uh, day progresses, and it looks like you're trying to, the, the um, remember here is looking for 10 cents maybe on the scalps, which is really not that much if you're in the right, you know, that's not much, that's an eye blink. You get, you can get 10, yeah, I mean, what I normally do is I, I usually go for 300 shares and look for 30 cents. You know, I try to scalp the market for $100 um, a shot. And that's just because I'm just programmed to do that. You know, I, I try not to stay away from, I, you know, I, I don't go overboard. I don't take it, you know, I just try to stay into that thing. And it's a, it's a methodology that works for me. And I'd like to chip away. I have a good feeling for it. Um, it doesn't give me uh, a nervous feeling because I'm not into the market too big. So that plays an important on your emotions and your fear factor. When you, when you take a trade, you don't want to be all nervous because you're overexposed to the market. You don't want to be always sweet swinging for the fences because more, more, more likely you're going to be shaken just by your emotional um, and that's not going to give you a clear view. So it's important to always be in the market when you feel comfortable and that's having the right position size for your account. All right, or whatever, you know, just as long as you feel comfortable. Um, so then we watch this, we're watching the full stochastic 1433, and you can see that sometimes they have a nice wave to it. Now, Amazon is a good stock to, to day trade. There's a lot of day traders in there, and you can see each time, let's see if we can bring up this, uh, each time we got back into an oversold level here, you know, and I, I usually draw a line at the 20, 20 mark just to kind of give me a, a gauge. So if I could see that line crossing underneath it, I know that I'm probably getting a better pullback here. And um, you know, I also want to be looking for that that trade. So in the case of Amazon, we'll talk about maybe. Uh, well, you always had that first morning pullback. You know, and th that was a a good level earlier in the morning, and we got a little pop off of that as the stochastics ran back up, and then it came back into an oversold level. And as this is happening, you can see a nice move here in the market. But it, it happened after we got oversold. And again, at this point, we kind of closed out the day. We didn't do much. But the important thing is we kind of got through all this chop. This was a you know a fast sell in the mor morning. You don't know what's going on. It's usually news related. The market sometimes gaps up, gaps down, and you get a lot of chop in the first half, half an hour to an hour. So, But once the market kind of gets into a rhythm, that's when I like to t jump on board and take those uh, indicators, usually mid midday and a lot of people say don't like the midday trading but not say midday but we're talking after usually after 11 o'clock and before three o'clock um, probably 10 30 to three o'clock I like to get that that set up and you can see so lots of times here's the S&P cash and that's I always want to follow that too because you're gonna get those signals exactly on that which we kind of compare with the uh, the future so um, an example on Amazon, we saw the pullback on the stochastics. We, you know, we're looking at it, we're holding lows. We're probably wondering if the market's, you know, is going to break down here or not. But this is telling us we're getting very close to being oversold and there's a little support line here. So what I want to do then is pretty much go out to my, and that, and you know, and that's coming up around, looks like one o'clock, 
right around one o'clock split in 12 and 1400 so right around one o'clock this happens so at one o'clock also I'm also meant uh, uh, following the market here in a way that let me uh, here's the S&P um, at one o'clock I'm also watching this and we got a little pullback in the stochastics but not much that we could see you know not much we could see here on this but what we'd really do see is because I'm just I'm usually watching the futures and the futures are a good representation of the cash the futures give it a, a, you know a really good um, setup here because we're always tracking this I'm always putting the trend lines in and you can see right at just about at one o'clock little before one we have this pullback trend line over so stochastics so the, the setup was here right at that point right at that point we got the crossover right at three o'clock we started jumping off of this trend line so that really would have you know caught my eye the nice pullback right here um, on the stochastics the, the trend line test you know and next time it comes down there we have a similar situation you know and again uh, a very similar situation here barely you know and each one of those times we actually got a little bounce all right, so we're going back at that one o'clock, and we see that that level's pretty much set up. So we've everything is just checking pretty good. So the Amazon looks like, you know, a good place to, to begin your scalp, and that's 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 the basis of it. You know, it's the basis of it is making sure you're not involved in a very choppy market. That's that's um, you know just very choppy. You want to have a, a rhythm to the market. You want to be able to be like the machine. You know, wait for your opportunity, take it. Get your scalp, wait around. You don't have to be machine gun in here. The more you trade, the more commissions you're gonna build up, the more chance you're gonna have to kind of over trade and, and get out of your zone. If you just step back, let the market come to you, let these trades, as long as you have the trades in front of you and you set them up like this on one you know, on a monitor, you can have Amazon, Netflix, and these things just kind of you know, they, they update as it as they're trading. So you actually see the stochastics pulling back. You see the uh, the setup here. Um, this was what's, what stock is this one here? Oh, Tractor Supply Company was a good a good example. Very strong stock, and you got oversold. Um, you know, you could have took that trade just based on that uh, indication because very rarely does it get oversold, and when it does, it's usually just that small little pullback, which holds and maintaining technical levels. Um, it was a good level. So try not to make it too complicated. I might, I don't want to make this sound like a very simple no brainer uh, thing, and it can't be that easy. But believe me, when it comes to trading, it is that easy. It's 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 harder when you start to mess around with what works. Uh, it's you know when you start to guess what the market's doing. You, you put an opinion on the bias of the market because you feel that the world is going to shit or you know something else is going on. So you're very bearish because that's what you're hearing on TV. Markets don't see it that way. Markets you know in some way are. You know, they move on technicals. They move on a lot of underlying factors that we can't see. And and we'll never be able to predict those factors. We'll, we'll be the last, you know, we're out there trying to catch the tr uh, crumbs of the bigger guys out there really control these markets. And when you, could, you, know, when you come to that realization, all you have to do is take the, the settings because these settings continue to work. They continue to set up. And it, you, every time you look back at it, you see an opportunity was there. So why would you not do it? You know, sometimes I just get, you know, I said, all right, screw the script, you know, do this, try it, you know, or tune in every day, watch us do it, you know, that's how good it is, you know, and that's, that's about it. That's, that's, that's the, uh, the gist of it. So again, you can actually see that during the day, I'm always tracking the ES uh, minis on, on the uh, show. And we're breaking down the patterns as they happen. We always important to watch the patterns and the trend lines. Once a trend line it gets really established, we look for that parallel uh, universe to kind of begin. And it happens a lot. You know, it happens more than more than it does. And you know, everywhere you look at a chart, you can pretty much see there's a range. You know, went up to here, down to here, kind of went back up to here, down to here, back up to here. You know, and once you're able to, the faster you're able to uh, identify that channel or that pattern. The, e the more you're going to be able to trade it as it happens. So in a case like this, as you know, I've, I've, probably a lot of you guys out there watch me. We talk about a one-two-three pattern, and the one-two-three pattern represents, you know, especially off of a reversal or a trend line reversal, you have three areas, three pivots in the market, and 
right when you break through this downward trend line, you know that we're kind of represented a nice breakout. So we're going to re that represents a channel uh, channel change or a trend change. So I actually take these two lines, draw a straight line all the way under, and I just put this parallel. I just put a parallel line up there. And what the uh, the theory is is to trade each time it comes up to that level. Now this level came up to a 200 period moving average, a pivot area, upward trend line, recognizable pattern, and an over overbought stochastic. So this this was a high probability right here. This was a high probability short setup. And again, this is on the one minute chart. So it, you know, and it, we did break down here, you know. Um, but again, we came right down to the trend line, and look how quickly we got oversold on the uh, stochastics. And again, you can see the reaction off that. Underlying trend line, indicator one. Stochastics, two. Recognizable pattern, because of the one, two, three pattern, three. Any moving averages or anything? No, support, no. So it's a three out of five, uh, you know, which makes it a high probability setup. You need to take that trade, and you need to just wait for the next setup that comes along. Hey, look, the trend line's gotten tested again. Hey, look, oversold stochastics, yeah. You know, you got a little bounce off of it, and when you're talking about trading you know, futures, that's what you're looking for. We're looking for a couple points on the futures. But the trend actually, you know, this was a little choppy. The trend actually, that bounce was actually held this trend line and actually moved up much higher off of that. But you always, I know people in the market, you know, they're always looking for the instantaneous uh, results. You know, you want to get into a stock, you know, you want to get into a, a stock at a certain price, you want it just to move up from that, not realizing you know, maybe you're in the wrong area and just needs to pull back a little, needs to hit some support, it needs to hit a, tr a channel line. So you want to have the other indicators lining up also to kind of give you a gauge of that. So that's how, you know, we even trade the uh, ES min e minis. The same similar situation. It's on a shorter time frame on the one minute chart. But I also continue to go back out and compare that with the S&P cash. Because when the S&P cash is set up, you know, for a good setup, there's usually a very, you know, there's a really good um, correlation between that and the futures. And when this five minute gets oversold, usually I have a good shot of a bounce. And here we did have that bounce on the futures. And of course, you see that bounce right here. This is the same thing. So on the five minute chart, that's when I rotate back to the five minute chart. And I have to have oversold here. So if I'm oversold on the five minute and the one minute, then that's a home run. That's th that makes it even better. And then you can even start breaking it down into the daily and then 60 minute charts. Um, and sometimes you'll start to see everything line up perfectly and that's when you start getting really excited. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that answers that person's question. You know who you are there. I don't want to butcher your name by trying to pronounce it. Well, maybe I will. Enviado desde me. Oh, maybe that maybe that says sent for my dead blackberry. <laughs> says sent for my blackberry. I thought the guy's name. Jeff. Jeff, sorry. Jeff Solomon. I think he's in Spain. Spain. Jeff. Thank you very much, Jeff. I hope you got this. You know. I told you I'd I'd uh, do a video on it. And if you guys have questions or you would like to do me to do a video on a, a question, please send those in. DTRS at daytradingradio.com. Or just come by the show. I am broadcasting live each and every day. Starting at 8.30, 8 o'clock, I'm in the office. You have a live picture of the screen. What you're looking at, you're actually looking at this video. So what you're seeing today and hearing me is the same thing you're seeing and, uh, and hearing each and every day, the whole market day. is me walking you through the markets, lining up these trend lines with you live, right there live. Now... You know, we do have a little member section that people get the uh, watch list of the stocks that are setting up beforehand, but that's that's uh, that's another thing altogether. But this is it. All right, that's enough of me. <laughs> Hope everyone enjoys the ten for a thousand watch list this week. Some good setups on it. Um, I keep on always wanting to throw stuff out there on the YouTube you know world out there because a lot of people out there are not members. But then again, it's like. There's so much good, you know, there's such a good membership uh, room and stuff that I kind of want to hold these new things that I'm finding here for another video. But, um, yeah, that's it. So, I'm done. <laughs>